incredible event, the World Baseball Classic. But yes, Team Japan, our focus here to begin today. I love they had a press conference just days ago in Tokyo to reveal some of the names who have committed already to play for Team Japan this spring. And I love this photo right here. That's Hideki Kuriyama on the right and, of course, Shohei Otani on the left. They were together with the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters back in 2013 during Otani's rookie year. Now reunited on the national team along with a couple current Major League players, Yu Darvish, Seiya Suzuki as well. And we just received some confirmation as well, Matt, in recent days. Lars Nootbaar of the St. Louis Cardinals, who is half Japanese, will play for Japan as well wow. at this tournament. So a, a great story for Lars to honor his Japanese heritage. We also expect to see Munetaka Murakami as well. Of course, the great home run champion that we spoke about so much during the year. Roki Sasaki as well. Team Japan, a multiple-time winner in this tournament. I really believe Matt will have one of their very best rosters ever. And they have certainly the star that we're all hoping to see around the baseball world in Shohei Otani playing back in his native land in Tokyo. It's going to be an incredible start to the World Baseball Classic. Wow, the Lars Nootbaar nugget's pretty interesting. That's, good. Yeah, that's no going to be fascinating to watch. Uh, there's also some news regarding commits for Team Netherlands, who is usually a power in this event. Yes, manager Hensley Bam Bam Mullins is back at the helm for Team Netherlands. As you point out, a semifinalist in last in the, the event last time back in 2017. And as usual, a lot of infielders whose names we know well. And the question will be, of course, who is going to play shortstop for the Dutch? I count Bogarts. I count Gregorius. Simmons, three great shortstops, of course. Profar could play the outfield. Scope likely at first base. Uh, Chadwick Trump behind the plate. And then Kenley Jansen, the closer for the Dutch team. We're not sure exactly who the rotation is going to be. They should have a pretty good bullpen with some prospects who are of, of Dutch lineage who are coming up in the minor leagues. But as we know, they found a way to make it to the semifinals. And, and perhaps if Kenley Jansen had been able to, to pitch longer in that game, maybe they find a way to beat the Puerto Ricans. Of course, the, the memorable moment early in that game when Yadier Molina had a great pickoff from behind the plate to, to negate a really early game rally uh, for the Dutch team. So for me, it's one of the teams to watch always in this competition. Of course, they're upset over the Dominicans years ago. So I can't wait to see Bam Bam managing the new Padre Xander Bogarts with the Dutch national team here in 2023. Yeah, and a couple of uh, veteran major league infielders there in Didi Gregorius and Andrelton Simmons who are free agents who could be using this event as a showcase to get a deal and play someplace in the big leagues in 2023. Let's get back to uh, Japanese players and the Oakland A's of all teams uh, investing in some Japanese talent. Tell us about the signing that they announced. Shintaro Fujinami, a one-year deal. Credit to Jeff Passan for being first to report this. He is someone who, at a time in his career, was viewed as being as electrifying as Darvish or Otani. You see him pitching for the Japanese national team. That is a biting split-fingered fastball. Now, he's had some injuries and some command issues, but he was able to put it all together over more than 100 innings in 2022. You see what he's done there over the course of his career. Uh, a, a really dynamic repertoire that I believe will allow him to have success with the Oakland Athletics as long as he's not counted on to throw necessarily 180 innings or more. I think he's exactly located where he should be in that rotation. Maybe give him the extra day of rest. Potentially, do we see them have at times a six-man rotation to make sure that he is part of the group? Uh, do they at different times? Do we see A.J. Puck starting games as well? I think that's a big question for the Oakland Athletics. So for me in general, Fujinami, a really good buy for them on a one-year deal. Someone who has always had a very high ceiling and I would expect will, will be an electrifying arm for the A's in 2023. Did he hit free agent eligibility after the required service time in Japan, or was he posted? I'm guessing it was the former. He was a posted player, actually. Oh, he was. So it's, it's a posted contract. 
for the Hanshin Tigers. Yes, yeah, so it's a one-year deal. They will receive a posting fee, but as we know, uh, that is uh, calibrated to how much the guarantee is. So it's certainly not going to be as substantial uh, as, as we have seen others like Yoshida, for example, earlier on in the offseason with the Boston Red Sox. Right. And sometimes, JP, as you know, offseason moves can uh, pertain to facilities as well. This one hits close to home. Comerica Park is changing its dimensions. Tell us about that. For the second time in Comerica Park's history, Matt, uh, there is a more hitter-friendly move in how the outfield dimensions are going to play at Comerica Park. And many would say needed. Nick Castellanos, of course, a longtime Tiger, would often say at different times that the dimensions should change. So center field uh, is still going to be the second deepest center field in Major League Baseball, but it's going to move in to 412. The wall height will drop in both center, right center, and right. Left field's always been a relatively fair dimension of course ever since they moved in the moved the bullpens from right field to center field i know mike lowell has done a lot of hitting at comerica park over the years it's always been a pitcher friendly ballpark and i think as scott harris the the tigers new chief of uh, baseball operations said yesterday the idea here is to make it a fairer park to give truer outcomes for well-hit balls uh, from an offensive standpoint. So I think this gets the park to a fairer spot. And perhaps, Matt and Mike, as time goes on, allows the Tigers to more easily attract some free agent offensive talent who have been perhaps um, a bit wary of the dimensions in years past. All right, JP, good stuff. Great information on a Thursday. Fence is coming in at Comerica Park. Uh, I want to ask you about that, Mike, because I think it's interesting um, They've kind of built their developmental system now around a lot of great pitching, right? First rounders like Matt Manning and Casey Mize, mm -hmm. and they think the world of Tarek Skubal, as a lot of us do. They bring in Michael Lorenzen as a free agent. Yet this message is probably one that's being received better by their hitters than their pitchers. Absolutely. I, I still think it's, it's a more of a pitcher-friendly park, but that's the reason why I think this graphic right here is why that move was made. The home runs. I mean, we're in the world where everyone, you know, you're, we're, we're basically banking on home runs. And if you're last in the league, you're you're hurting. I mean, I, when I played there, the fences in left field have already been moved in. And I still remember Juan Gonzalez saying, I'm not playing there for any money in the world because it's so far. I can't even imagine when they first opened the park. I mean, it was, you're taking batting pride. You're hitting balls into the, into the bullpen. You're like, oh, that's an out. You know, and I just think mentally, you hit a ball 415 feet to dead center, and you're not even rewarded with a hit. You make a right hand turn into a dugout, you're like, oh, my God, that just takes your soul away. You're not yeah. supposed to hit that. And then, you know, you'll get the baseball ops guys after the game and be like, hey, way to swing it. You know that would have been a home run in 29 other parks. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you're not helping me. Not helping. Unless on the back of the baseball card you're adding the home run and then whatever, the slugging and the total bases, you're not helping me. So – I think it's it's not a drastic move. I mean, 10 feet, it's still a deep center field park, so I don't yeah. think it's just going to make all oh, the pitchers are at a, this huge disadvantage. But, yeah, there are a couple couple balls that are, you know, they're touched sure, up and you sure. want to get rewarded. And Absolutely. lower fences, too. It's not yeah. just distance, it's height. And, I mean, this for consideration, too. They hit 110 homers last year, which was the lowest total in the big leagues right. by far. And less than half the home runs that the Yankees ended up hitting when they led the league in homers last year. So, yeah, I, I get the move for sure. It's going to be interesting.